work hard, get dough. I can't get no sleep, please make my life more simple. Today, I want to talk about seat belts in the plane. And recently, I, I say recently, in the past few months, I realized that when I would get in, I'd put my seatbelt on my leg strap, and I wouldn't really think about it much more. But then I started looking, I started paying attention to those seat belts and how long most of them are. And, and I'm gonna say pretty much every plane that I've been in, the seat belts, when you, when you buckle them together, the, the length of that buckle to the connection point on the plane is usually somewhere between two and three feet, maybe, I'm gonna say. Sometimes I guess they can be a little bit shorter. I don't know if I've ever seen any longer. That, that's three feet, it seems like that'd be really long. But regardless, maybe I, my measurements are off, but it's somewhere around there, right? So I started thinking about that. I was like, man, if we're in a, if we're in a plane crash, if we have an emergency landing and something happens, that is a lot of movement. You think about that, from that connection point to that buckle, let's say it's two feet long. If, that, if that's moving along, that, that would be essentially the radius of a circle, right? So that means that buckle can move along the circumference of that circle. A two foot radius, that, that is a significant amount of movement. If that buckle, if that seat belt is extended as long as it will go. So if I buckle that seat belt and I don't shorten it at all, I don't tighten it, and then we have a crash, that means my body is able to move a lot many many feet from one position all the way to another position and that means that is a lot of force that is a lot of movement throughout the throughout the fuselage of the plane and if everybody's seat belt is like that is extended to its maximum length that means everybody can move around in a, in a crash and emergency landing we're not being secured like I think we would all hope we would be secured in that in the event of, of a plane crash or emergency landing so I have started in the past few months, I've started when I buckle that seatbelt, I've started getting it as short and as tight as I can, as possible, safely, right? So I'm not, I don't want it so tight that, that I'm restricted from being able to move at all or that I'm in some weird and awkward position or I'm bothering the, the tandem instructor and his student behind me, I'm in their way. That's not what I'm doing, but I'm getting it as, as short as, as I can and still be, be able to move a little bit. And I think that little bit of inconvenience of, of not being able to move as much, or maybe it's pulling on me just a little bit, I think that's, that's more important. That's better uh, to give that up, that convenience up, for the sake of safety in the event of a crash landing. Now, I've been trying to pay attention also, uh, you know, as I go to different drop zones, I get on different planes, jump with different people. I try to pay attention and watch, and as far as I can tell, I'm gonna say it looks to me like most people are not tightening those seat belts. Now, maybe there's a good reason that we shouldn't tighten them that I'm not thinking of or I'm not aware of, or maybe I've missed, but it seems to me like that, the ideal thing would be for everyone in the plane to buckle up and then tighten that seat belt down. I think most people aren't tightening just because we don't talk about it, nobody ever says you need to, and it's just a convenience thing. It's not something we, we really think or push. Um, so I'm really suggesting that we all start tightening them. I think that's helpful. The other thing that I'm thinking about is in the event of a crash or, or, or a malfunction, something in the, in the plane loses altitude or it stalls or whatever, and there is a, a big movement um, in the fuselage, if everyone's, if everyone's seatbelt is extended to its maximum length, that means everyone in the plane, their body can move and shift, their weight can move and shift in a crash landing. Okay, that seems, that seems unsafe for the reason I said already, we can smash into one another and move around, but also let's say that the, the pilot is trying to control the plane and something happens that causes everyone in the plane to shift forward, to, to move or fly forward. If everyone can move three or four or five feet and you're on, we're on a, a twin otter and we've got 18 people and rigs and gear, that is a lot of weight. We're talking about a couple of thousand pounds or, or well, no, more than that. We're talking about, you know, a ton and a half, three, over 3,000 pounds probably, that would be shifting forward four to five feet or backward or side to side or whatever, it doesn't matter. That could have a significant effect on the pilot's ability to control the plane. Um, or it could, it could cause the plane to stall out maybe. If, if the shift was in the wrong way at the wrong time, that could really affect the maneuverability and the flight characteristics of the plane. Versus if we, the cargo, is secured as tightly as possible, there is less weight shift. 
And to me, that seems much, much safer. And it's a very easy thing for all of us to do. It's a very easy fix. It's not inconvenient. It's not difficult. It's not complicated. It's, it's not even uncomfortable. You just tighten it down as much as you can and still be comfortable. I think, we've made, I think that will make a huge difference. Now, the reality is probably most of us, hopefully, will never ever know the difference of having a short seatbelt or a long seatbelt, tight or not tight, because hopefully most of us will never ever be in that situation where we, we're in a plane that has to make an emergency landing or a crash landing. But in, in the small, the small chance, the, those cases that you are, I think that is, is necessary and is gonna make a big difference. Now, maybe there's something I'm not aware of or something that I've, I've just not thought of. Um, I would love it if, if you guys would put your comments, uh, leave a comment and tell me, do you tighten your seatbelt or do you not and why? If you tighten it, why do you tighten it? If you don't, why don't you tighten it? And if there's something that I'm missing, a good reason, a safe reason to leave it long, I would love to know that because I wanna know what's the safest way for us to do this. And then I wanna encourage all of us to do that. Um, so leave me a comment. Let's see, let's see what everybody says and let's keep the conversation going. I hope this is helpful. I hope it's gonna make us all safer. Uh, I hope it's gonna um, be something that we can share with the rest of the Skydiving community and we'll all be uh, in a better place for it. If, if this is helpful to you and you want to learn more, go check out our channel, um, check out the other videos that I've posted that I have up. You can go to the Crave website, cravetofly.com. We've got courses up there, video courses from a bunch of different instructors, great, great skydivers, phenomenal people, really talented coaches and instructors where you can learn a lot of really good stuff. Uh, I, hope, I hope that'll be beneficial to you. I think you'll enjoy it. You'll be a better skydiver and you'll be safer. Um, so I hope that's helpful and hopefully we'll see you in the sky. Crave, do more. You better.